my name's Jamie, Jamie Lang. Um, I'm 25 years old. Um, I'm a little bit Scottish. I went to Leeds University, so I did performance. I run a business called Candy Kittens, which is a confection fashion business. Um, and I'm on a TV show called Made in Chelsea, which is a reality show. So Candy Kittens, like I said, is a confection fashion brand. Um, I came up with the idea when I was at university and I was sitting in university and I thought, why the hell am I here? I don't want to be here. And I thought, okay, well, I realised I can't work for anyone else. That's what I realised from a young age. I went to boarding school and hated boarding school because I was trapped. The only thing I liked was rugby and I was playing sport because I kind of could do my own thing. So I knew that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And so I didn't understand the making the other people, other people a success. If you want to make yourself a success, do it yourself. So I was sitting in class and thought, right, if I'm going to do something by myself, I have to do something that I love. So I thought, honestly, I thought, I thought, what do I love? And I thought, well, I love sweets. So I do something with sweets. I love fashion and I love girls. So I put the three together and created Candy Kittens. I used to go to New York a lot, and uh, Dylan Loren, who's Ralph Loren's daughter, has a big sweet shop out there called uh, Dylan's Candy Bar. And I went in there and saw the way they had marketed sweets, and they had sort of, and it was all kind of bright colours and exciting and fun, not just aimed at kids, but aimed at all ages and sexy and cool and exciting. And so I took that kind of inspiration and brought it to the UK, and that's why our packaging and kind of the way we, we sort of market our sweets and things like that is kind of what we think is kind of a cool and sexy way and fun and exciting and unique. So with fashion, we produce sort of t-shirts. It's very kind of casual stuff. It's the t-shirts, tracks your bottoms, uh, sweatshirts, things like that, but kind of cool, very kind of, keeping it kind of sort of London kind of vibe, um, aimed towards sort of female market. If you throw something and catch it in my mouth, I'm very good at catching things in my mouth. I was, I was skiing once, and my stepdad was on the sofa and he had a Snickers, and I was, probably about 20 metres down the side, underneath the chair. And I said, can I have a Snickers? He went, yeah. He said, throw it to me. He went, no. And I went, throw it to me, throw it to me. A Snickers? A Snickers? I went, Shh. I caught it in my mouth. And the whole chair left, people clapped. It's a very good trick. I've always had an interest in fashion, ever since I was a kid. I was one of those kids who, you know, your, your mum goes and buys you clothes, and I said, no, I don't want that. This is what I want. I was one of those guys who sort of chose my clothes at a young age. Always love fashion. I love, I, love people, I love people who express themselves in whatever ways, whether it's sort of music, art, anything like that. And you know, fashion, I think, is one of those places where people kind of express themselves. That's why I like fashion. But our sweets are kind of gummy sweets, um, and they come in like a packet like that. I don't know, can you see that size? Like a brick, but a lot lighter than a brick. And they are gummy, and we have four different flavours, peaches and cream, apple and elderflower, sour watermelon and eat mess. They're all natural flavours, gluten-free. Um, you know, they're, they're the healthiest sweets you can eat by eating sweets. You know, we've really, we've taken out all of those nasty bits and, you know, try to keep all the good bits. And they taste like angels have made them. So I think, you know, so obviously my great-great-grandfather invented the digestive, which is pretty cool. Everyone loves digestives and the rich tea and hobnob, I think, as well. Um, and I think, you know what, confectionery, so confectionery kind of thing was always in my blood. Maybe that's why I've always been in that kind of industry. And I think entrepreneurial spirit has always been in there. So I think it's kind of within you to do it. And also we hate working for other people, hate being told what to do. My dad hates being told what to do. He does his own thing. So I think that's where it's come from. I think the pros of the fashion world is that you can literally do whatever you want. You have the freedom to do whatever you th want to do, which is great. That, that's a liberty to go out there and say, I think this looks good, or I think that looks bad. And I think that's, that's so sort of amazing and fun in an industry. You know, there aren't that many industries where you can go and literally do anything you want. Um, and that's what I love about the fashion world. I went to Ibiza once and I, and I bought a pink boiler suit. And I thought that was pretty cool, and I wore that. It wasn't definitely, it was about two sizes too big for me. But I wore that, and that was very bad. The bad point of fashion is that people always judge you on whatever you wear. There's so much judgment in the fashion world. And I think that's obviously, 
difficult because then people feel they have to follow a road to take. And I don't think people do whatever you want. Go and have fun, wear whatever you want. If you want to wear a pink boiler suit in Ibiza on the beach, wear it. Even though you regret it, wear it. Highlight of my career. When I was 11 and scored this try, that was pretty, in rugby, that was a pretty big highlight. I still remember it today, it was really good. But apart from that, my highlight, what is my highlight of my career? I did this BB, getting my sweets into Selfridges, that was pretty good, getting my candy into Selfridges, that was big. I just finished a documentary with BBC One for Sports Relief called Famous Rich and Hungry, where I lived in sort of real sort of, supposedly poverty in the UK, people where they go hungry and things like that for about seven days. Um, and we raised a lot of money, so that's probably a big highlight. What I realised, people came out of me, was it's like, do you learn, like, because these families honestly live on, like, they live on about a pound 5p per day for food, per person, a pound. And, you know, my smoothie up the road cost four quid or whatever, so that's like four days worth of food. Um, and people said, are you going to go into this experience and come out, you know, can you, do you now budget well and do you not spend as much? I said, no, that, that's not really, because you can't really change the person, I think you adapt, you don't really change. What I did realise and what I did kind of sort of experience and understand is that the most, when everything is bad and everything goes wrong, the most important thing in life is family. And people kind of forget that because your family's always there and you take them for granted, but don't because they're the most important thing. Um, and that's what kind of I learnt from the whole experience. Yeah, yeah, Joan Rivers. <laughs> is that weird? <laughs> Joan Rivers is my guilty pleasure. <laughs> You know what, the, the idea we all, you know, because my inspiration came from America and um, so I want to, you know, launch over there. I want to get it into the American market and put all my sweets there and, and do all those sort of things. And you know, also with the television kind of sort of side of it, I've always wanted, you know, the reason I did sort of reality and things like that was it was a platform to other things. You know, a lot of people frown upon reality television because it's reality television and you kind of get a profile for just being yourself. But I always saw it as a platform, whether it was for business or whether it was for TV presenting, and that's kind of the roads I'm sort of using it for. The advantages of being the show is that you get to, like I said before, you get to hang out with your friends all day and you get paid to it, which is just great. Um, it, you know, if you, if you treat it right and you, you kind of see it as, like I said, a platform of other things, you can really do stuff, whether it's business or whether it's other TV work, you can really have the opportunity to get into great things and do different things. The disadvantages are it's a roller coaster. So, you know, you, you, sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not. And that's a hard thing, but if you keep a level head. And also, again, people love to judge. But if you, you know, everyone loves to judge. So, you know, you, you get hate and you get love and you kind of deal with the whole thing. And that's what, supposedly, what's so fun about it. Because you're once the prince and then you're the opposite to the prince, whatever that is. <laughs> I think it's so important to stay grounded and ex enjoy, like, life is an adventure and you kind of go and enjoy that adventure. And if you kind of, you, you kind of think too much about it and you kind of, think you're better than this or, or greater than that, it doesn't work, just enjoy it. And so no, I just kind of kept it pretty casual and fun. Every, everything you see on the TV is what I'm like, and real world is unfortunate sometimes. Um, I think, no, you know what, I, I'm the same sort of guy, I'm kind of energetic and, and loud, and, and that's what I think they portray me as on the show. I think you know, the great thing about our show is that whatever you see yourself as whatever they you know you, you sort of do on the show you are going to be portrayed as that and people try to argue go no no, no that's not quite what it is it's exactly what you're like it's just you know you just don't like to see sometimes what you're like you know in life the great thing about life is that you can do bad things and you don't get to really play them our show you do bad things and you watch it over and over again so it's terrible <laughs> um the next season once again, you know, we go into every season, we say, this is the best season. Honestly, this season's epic. Something's happened this season, there's a lot of tears, real heartbreak. Um, and also, there's this, normally when the show comes out or you're, you're doing scenes or whatever, um, you kind of know what's going to happen because you kind of can see things going on. There's been a couple of times this season where I've had no idea what's about to happen. Something happens and I go, Jesus. Well, I literally clap and I'm like, that's unbelievable, because there's surprises that you just never knew were going to happen, which is just great. With my brand Candy Kins, I want to separate myself from the brand, and that's quite hard. When you're in television, you're very much associated with the brand. Um, and we've, you know, thanks to my great team I have, we, we do try and separate that. And without them, I couldn't do it. So yes, it's very hard to juggle so the TV world with the business world. 
But at the same time, being busy is the best in the world. You kind of worry when you're not busy, because then you go, huh? He's cute. Mini Jamie in the little news Made in Chelsea advert was, Mini Made in Chelsea was cute. Just liked sweets and had blonde hair and just hung out, like the Milky Bar kid. It's an energetic, annoying kid, like I was. But I was sweeter. <laughs> I think running. I think running. I go running a bit. Running helps. Um, going out, seeing friends. I have to be around friends. I have to be. I'm the most sneedy person in the world. I need to be around people. Or just like puppies. Just buy me like a bunch of puppies and I'll be fine. Just things which make me feel better, like friends, sweets, um, you know, running, things like that. Exercising is key if you're stressed. Run. Like around. That's why Forrest Gump ran, because he was stressed. I, I think. <laughs> if you have an idea, go and do it. People are afraid to go and try things. And the biggest you know, disappointment in life if you, if you regret something. Never regret anything. If Go and do it. If you fail, who cares? Get up and do it again. If you fall down, you can always get back up. Um, some guy gave me the best bit of advice. And I still remember it today. And he said, business is paid in two currencies, cash and experience. Take the experience first because the cash will come later. And it's very true. And so if you're, if people are all people, if you're conscious about you want to go into business and be an entrepreneur, don't worry about making money. Don't worry about it because that will come. Enjoy it, experience it, take everything you can. And then later, all that money will come and you will be a success. It's just about taking time and relaxing and making sure you understand the sort of field you're in. I don't really like having days off because I think I have ADD. That's what I think I have. I can't sit still. So um, not when I don't have my... When I have a day off, I probably go and hang with friends. I go and annoy people, my friends, and just go and hang with them and chill. Or go on holiday. Love holiday, love traveling. Love going to different places. Okay, my favorite sweet are these sweets you get in the south of France called surfs. They're like sour surfboards like that. Different colors, like that. they are the dream. But not quite as good as candy canes, but they're still dreamy. So I grew up in the country for, until I was about we had lived in London and the country we sort of commuted um, and I came from a big family my dad and my mum divorced when I was about eight um, but I came from I got eight brothers and sisters eight brothers and sisters so I have to be loud and you have to kind of have attention and so I thrive for attention but thank god I was my mum's favourite um, <laughs> um, but I went to boarding school so I was at boarding school and I played a lot of sports so I was a sports scholar so I played rugby and run and, and all those kind of things. And it, growing up was fun, you know. It was fun, very kind of running about. You know, my mum said I used to run before I walked. So it was always very kind of... And going on holiday, I was made to have a siesta in the afternoon, which I hated. And I wasn't allowed to eat sweets because I made me too hyper. Yeah, so growing up was shit. I'm <laughs> so growing up was bad. <laughs> it was good, it was fun.